right? What can we do? Nothing's going to get better. Nothing's ever getting better. And I, I'm, a, I'm a hopeful person. I'm a person of hope. So when I, what I like to do is I like to look at where we were and where we are now, okay? Because what that does is shed some light that some of the things that, that, the, that the state is doing, that the federal government is doing, that the local ABCD is doing, that you and I are doing, is actually improving air quality. If we were to look at, this is for high ozone days, if we were to look at, um, this is 96, so about 10, 12 years ago, the data, well we had like 30, on average 35.7 days in, in either the orange, red, or purple, okay? But if we're, go, if we're to look at 2006 data, we, we went slightly ab above our 2003, 2005 rating, which was 7.3 days. We're here at 8.3 days. So there has been a significant improvement because of numerous policies that have been passed, okay? However, it takes people like you and I to make sure and keep our politicians accountable that these policies get passed, right? right. Okay? Right. So that's for ozone. What does it look like for particulate pollution? Wow. Oh, yeah, thank you. Okay, so for particulate pollution, this is based in 2000. We had about 15.6. We dipped down here. And then we're at 12.5, okay? This red line signifies the Environmental Protection Agency standard. So right now, we're actually, we're actually um, um, doing better than what the EPA standard is at for particulate pollution. But if you remember, for ozone pollution, we're actually not meeting their standard. This is their standard. We need to be below this standard, okay? But... There is what? Hope. There's hope. hope. There's hope, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Hope of preventing the mission. There is hope. All right. So you're. So I haven't really talked about respiratory health yet. And we're going to go into what what is actually in our air here, but. How does particulate matter, how does ozone affect our health? And outside there's this little card here, and um, this, is, it, this has the data from last year, but the information here is the same. If you get that, I, I recommend you getting that little card out there. Particulate matter can damage the lungs directly by inflaming or destroying the lung tissue. So this is why it's important. It can damage or destroy the protective hair lining. Um, of the airways. It could also inflame lung tissues, rest restricting air passages. Breathing becomes difficult and produces symptoms like coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath, and it is an asthma trigger. Okay? Ozone. Why is this important for respiratory health? Ozone smog is dangerous because it causes harsh chemical reaction with your body. It affects wheezing and coughing, shortness of breath, chest pain, asthma attacks, eye, throat, nose, irritation, lung function below normal, inflaming lung lining, and increased respiratory infections. So why should we care about our air quality here in the valley? Because this is one of the things that triggers asthma, okay? Allergy. Is outdoor air quality as well. And allergies as well. According to California Breathing, their data, which um, I believe is 2005 data, they said that Imperial County has the highest hospitalization rate for children who have asthma, okay, in the, in the whole um, state of California. Okay? Imperial County has one, one of the worst um, areas for air pollution. We're going to go over, well, what are these things contributing to air pollution, okay? Now, remember I told you and, and that there's two things that contribute to ozone pollution, it's, and it's this combination of things. What were those two things? Do you remember? Well, it's, it's, it's ROGs, the, the, the uh, reactive organic gases, and then it's also the NOx, okay, nitrate oxide, okay? And, we're gonna, I, and that's a very scientific term, but I'm going to break it down to you. What does it actually mean tangibly? What, what, what is it out there? Um, what is it? Um, 
The California Air Resources Board, which is a state agency, they um, are responsible for looking at the different things in each county that contributes to air pollution. And they looked at Imperial County and they did an estimate like, what is it going to be like in Imperial County in 2010 based upon trend data? And they looked and they saw that, that um, these are going to be the main pollutants for reactive, reactive organic gases, which in combination with what? Not nah. right? Creates what? Ozone, Ozone pollution. pollution. Okay? Reactive organic gases with what? Nah. Creates what? Ozone, Ozone, Ozone pollution. pollution. There you go. So the ROGs, the top ten, according to the California Air Resources Board, is this is for ROGs, is livestock waste from dairy cattle, livestock waste from feedlot cattle off-road recreational vehicles, light-duty passenger cars, that's the cars we drive, pesticides, asphalt paving and roofing, consumer products, uh, uh, prescribed burning, ag burning, and heavy-duty diesel trucks. Okay. Now, NOx combined with what? <coughs> organic and organic and ROGs, right? Produces. Makes, produces what? Ozone pollution. pollution. So for the top 10 NOx here in the county is heavy duty diesel trucks, manufacturing and industrial uh, uh, facilities such as broilers, engines and stuff like that, trains, light duty passenger cars, that's you and me, farm equipment such as tractors, electric utilities, off-road equipment for construction and mining, aircraft, um, service and commercial boilers, again, the, the uh, engines, and prescribed burning, okay? So that's what's going on here. Now, for particulate matter, what's the top ten? Well, we experienced it last week, and what was that? Wind. The wind, right? The wind. UGD, it's called, what, what CARB likes to call it, or the California Air Resources Board likes to call it, is fugitive blown or wind blown dust. Okay? So that's number one for particulate matter, PM10, okay? Um, also, um, unpaved road dust, farming operations, paved road dust, livestock waste, uh, mineral processing, construction and demolition, prescribed burning, ag burning, heavy duty diesel trucks. So those are the things that are contributing to particulate matter, okay? So now we have more of a visual as to what is in our air and what the California Air Resources Board has said it are the top 10 things that is contributing to air pollution. Now you're like, okay, well that's kind of big. How can I actually do anything to fix anything, right? I'm just one person. <laughs> well, there's a lot of things that we can do as a community. One is to get involved. And one way to get involved is the county right now is doing a state implementation plan in which they are actually laying out how they're going to improve air quality or reduce air pollution in the county for the next two, five, ten years. And every one of us can have a say in that. Even if we don't have technical knowledge in that, just by writing a simple letter to the Board of Supervisors saying this is an issue in which I'm concerned. And every one of us in here has a story of either ourselves, our children, our students, our patients, in which we've seen firsthand what some, and sometimes it's environmental triggers can do to the health of an individual. And you can write your story, okay? And let that be known. And that, your story is powerful. It's very powerful. Another thing as well is report air pollution. Now people are like, report air pollution, what? Right. Now, yep. let, me give you, let me give you a scenario. If someone were to break into your house, you went on vacation, someone broke into your house, and um, they stole everything, right? And you come home and you're like, oh, they stole everything. What are you going to do? Call the police. Call the you call the police. police. You won't sit on your couch and be like, oh, well, there's nothing I can do. Oh man, the police are horrible in this area. The 